feel like artists have an obligation to be more politically involved or at the very least to support these black platforms and creators. I wish they would. I wish they felt obligated because I made comments about what Drake had to say about This Is America. A lot of people focus on what artists they think you don't like or who you've criticized, but who do you like? Who in this new arena or in the last however many years, who has surprised you, who has impressed you? Uzi Vert, for that matter. There's no evidence to suggest that you're ready for prime time, so let's see what you got. Royale's brought up, that's tough love. There's always the constant discussion around Sampling now every time a new female rapper drops a song, the Twitter dialogue is, oh my God, <laughs> another sample track. How do you feel? How do you feel about our sampling? How do you feel about the state of it? You know, did you do anything interesting with the sample? We've never supported them in, in a mainstream successful way. And then when they pivot to something else, we act as though they the ones, you know, abandoning the blueprint. I feel like I say that a lot with Chloe is a good example of that. Chantel come out a song that I'm like, I know exactly Yo. where she's going with it. It's jiggy to the Americans. And when I look on my Caribbean timeline, they are not, They're not right. having Yo, it at all. And, I, and Shinsia is fire. Like talent-wise, fire. Talent -wise, fire. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I mean, the re I don't do a lot of these. And the reason I'm here is because I think you're one of the people that really got something unique and awesome to offer. The first question I have to ask you and is, what's it feel like to be an icon, bro? There is a thing about music. When, there, when we're all going through something collectively, traumatic and a song comes out from someone who is talented and can tap into that vibration the right way That's right. it feels like we're all being seen and we're not alone I don't even know if I, uh, I mean, I received that love, but I don't know if I really comprehend that as a concept in a real life way, but I appreciate it. I you don't are. even know if You I... have been a hip hop staple for quite literally over 20 years. Yeah. Um, and that's a big I, I think I, I think um, most of the time I find myself just being happy that people still give a shit. You know what I'm saying? And being honored to like, you know, be asked by somebody like yourself or like, you know, people who are, you know, doing doing uh, work uh, in in the real world. Right. Because I don't really think what the work that I do is like the real world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like I yeah. talk shit. We play music and I talk about some real shit. But like people like yourself are like, really, y'all really been in the trenches, like really on the front lines or like my homegirl, Tamika Mallory or Carmen Perez or, you know, what I'm saying people that, you know, my, my homegirl Erica Ford or, you know, people who just really been outside and really are trying to be that for people. And um, so I just, I don't know, I look at it through that lens um, I, that I'm just honored to kind of, you know, still be be able to to help people and use my platform and people tune in. And and then when I show up to work, my key card still be working and they the advertisers ain't ran me up out of there yet. So we good. <laughs> That's so we good. And that's honestly, that's a big deal, Ebro. I don't think you, you know, before, long before I was in America, I knew you, Ebro, as a staple, wow. <laughs> a staple in hip hop. And I don't think people even realize. I think this is your 20th year at Hot 97, right? Yeah, it is. It is. That's a big years. deal. What does that feel like? Uh, it, it feels, it feels like a blessing. Um, I think, you know, I came up in this industry. I started, uh, it was well, in, in media specifically, not really. You know, I don't really see myself like in the music business. I kind of see myself adjacent to the music business because I'm not in that business. Like I help artists get the word out about their music and I pick music that I like, but I'm not, I don't care if an album sells or doesn't sell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, that's not, I didn't record it. I wasn't there for the recording. I didn't have anything to do with like the ideas. That's the business of music. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the media business, right? So um, the media business is very cutthroat. You know what I'm saying? You here today, gone tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? You show up right. to work, they playing, you know, I came up in the nineties where they would tell you off top, like, yo, you might come in tomorrow, they playing country music. So, you know, enjoy it while I last. You don't own these microphones, you don't own this broadcast license, they don't owe you nothing. And I've definitely been in positions where, you know, program director will be like, hey, come in and do this shift. And you'd be like, okay, you know, being 17, 18 years old, you don't know. Meanwhile, the person who had the shift before and then it got into some shit and, and they didn't tell, like I'm from that era where they didn't even call you. They would just, <laughs> somebody show up to work and you're, somebody doing your shift 
and you looking around like, yo, I had no idea that y'all was going through <laughs> some shit. They just asked me to show up, you right. know? So yeah, you learn, um, you learn that, you know, you, every day's a blessing that, you know, the key card works and the business is still going and you got a place to go. And what do you think makes you survive, right? Because you're right. The industry has changed. You see radio in and of itself has been hard. Like, yeah. people have a hard time staying in media in any capacity, mainstream, independent radio, and all these things for any period of time. So how do you make it 20 years? Um, I think uh, one is stay humble. Two is understand the, to the, 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 the macro of the business. Yeah. You know, and I think you can apply that to anything that you're doing, right? Like, um, these businesses are in business to make money. And so yeah. you got to go in understanding like, okay, they're here to make money. I want to get paid for what I'm bringing them. Uh, what are the things that make their cash register ring? And am I willing to participate in those things? Because you may not be willing to participate in them, in them things. So don't show up for the bag and then be mad that, the way they go about getting the bag is against your beliefs. Yeah. And then you mad at them. Like, who you mad at? Like, they that's how they get their money. Like, don't take that bag. So um, I think I've always tried to uh, have an understanding of the total totality of the business and have respect for that. Um, yeah. And then I think the other part is you pick and choose your moments. Like, every yeah. moment, uh, every, every convo, every interview, every show uh, isn't a make or break. Right. Like, so yeah. you don't have to be out here chasing everything and every new shiny object or every new, right. like, I've never been the one to chase every interview. It's a lot of interviews I'm not doing. It's a lot of people I'm not sitting down talking to. Like I'm not, some people I'm not sitting down and arguing with you about some shit that we don't agree on. Like I'm not interviewing racists. Like we, I'm not doing this. I'm not interviewing white supremacists on some, you know, on the internet today, people would be like, Yo, but you need to come to an understanding. There's no understanding, bro. There's you don't no like people who look like me or my parents. You don't like yeah. that. I, you, we don't like each other. And that's fine. Like, we ain't got to like each other. I ain't got to fuck with you. You ain't got to fuck with me. I don't believe what you believe. You ain't believe. All right, cool. Peace. Like, go right. somewhere else with that. So I think that's another way, too. Um, certain shit I just don't fuck with. And that's just Integrity. that. Integrity. I think that's one of the main reasons I respect yeah. you so much, Ebro. I yeah. always tell my friends, I'm like, I know a lot of public figures and a lot of people in this industry have access to you, you know, and this information, but they will not use it. I'm like, Ebro will call me up and be like, hey, explain this right quick. What's going on before I even engage with this propaganda or what's happening <laughs> with bail? <laughs> explain it for me. And I'm like, that, that goes a long way. And I think that has a lot to do personally with what I see your longevity to be, right? Because I think you see times change. Times change and they change fast. They continue to change with the internet and the customs. And I'm like, you see right. that from Ego, like a willingness to evolve, to evolve, to recognize kind of the times and also to make those kind of like integrity stances. Like I've there have been times where you've gone viral for things and I'm like, yeah, that's what that that's that's what history would want him to say, would want him to acknowledge uh politically what's happening, make these kinds of, you know, critiques. Right. And I think Something I really wanted to ask you about, because I, I think it's probably demonstrated here. I've seen people comment about, like, how some artists don't go. Like, I think Drake is the one. I think it was Elliot Wilson that made a comment about them not going to black platforms, like not going to go into these black platforms and making sure they're there. And how do you feel about that? Do you feel like artists have an obligation to be more politically involved or at the very least to support, you know, other of these black platforms and creators? No, I, I, I don't. Um... I, I, I wish they would. I wish they felt mm -hmm. obligated, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel yeah. like they have an obligation. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, uh, hmm. I just don't, you know, I think that, and I also don't want people to be phony either. Yeah. Like if you don't feel that and you're not connected to that, or you're uncomfortable in that, or you, you know, um, you know, it's just not who you are or how you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, and, 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 and I wish that people would be, I do wish that people would be more vulnerable. Like if they see people who look like them going through something and they're not connected to it, at least maybe say, Hey, I don't understand that. How can I help you? You know what I mean? Like what's, what's your message? Maybe I could uplift your message. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I think, but that's how I would do it. Right. Yeah. Like, but I can't expect everybody to see things the way I see it or have yeah. the lived experiences that I have. So I don't, I don't feel an obligation. 
Now, recently, you know, there was a whole little duff up on the internet because I, you know, made comments about what Drake had to say about This Is America. And he's entitled to his opinion. But now you're talking about a song that for, for me, like I'm not involved in whatever you and Childish Gambino is going through. I just know that in that moment when that song came out, it felt good for people who was feeling emotional about the state of affairs in society. And yeah. so now you want to take commentary about something that I know was meaningful to me and my community and people that live in the United States or, or, or have friends who are actively on the front lines dealing with police brutality, dealing with, you know, of, uh, you know, just the violence in society and abuse in society, whether it's from powerful institutions or powerful politicians or, you know, uh, or the police state. And, you know, yeah. that kind of commentary, whether whether you like it or not, it's subjective, it's art, it's cool. But yeah. let's not just act like it's irrelevant or it didn't matter because it did matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now you want to you want to say something about that. So I'm going to say something about the fact that, well, why you didn't you don't ever show up, but you got something to say about this. Yeah. And I think, you, you know, know what I'm saying? So I think that's valid a valid. I, right. I think it's a valid critique. Um, yeah. Otherwise, don't say nothing. Yeah. And I think that's valid, right? Because, you know, the obvi obviously the blogs took it out of context. All they say is, oh, Ebro criticizes Drake for not commenting on, on race or politics, and that's not at all. Um, well, yeah, they wanted said. clicks, and they that's how they're getting their advertising up, right? They're getting their engagement yeah. up off that. You know, you take Drake, Black, not showing up, Black, that shit going to go crazy. And it wasn't yeah. my intention for it to go crazy. That shit is like a week old. I was just doing <laughs> what I normally do all the time. Like, some people pick yeah. up on shit I say. Some people don't give a fuck, you know, don't move. But yeah. on this particular day, it did. Um, and, and, and I personally really, really, really like what Drake brings to the game as Same. an artist. Like, I, you know, they, I don't know, you know, I don't believe they like me too much because I've had critiques of him before, but I've had critiques of Jay-Z. I've had critiques of Nas. I've had critiques of Beyonce. I've had critiques of, I mean, they're public figures. So yeah. when yeah. you're a public no. figure... And I, and by the way, and these are some of my friends, like I consider yes. them friends. I support them. I want to help them. Um, yeah. but that the same way, my friends and family, if I did some wild shit or was off point, y'all, Ola's calling me, B. She's going to be like, yo, Ebro, you fucked that up, bro. You need to fix that up. Tamika Mallory, my son, they going to call me and be like, yo, you fell short on this. Yeah. Like tighten yeah. this up. And they may say it in public. Like if I said something in public, they're going to be like, look, I fuck with Ebro, but this is wrong. Yeah, I think that and, and I, and I, I want that thing. and we need that and I expect that like like we need that for each other to not Absolutely. feel what it what's the term above reproach. Yes. Yeah. No, because honestly, sometimes it's like you get these legitimate perspectives, right? Because when I saw that, obviously, everybody just sees the headline and then they launch into a million different diatribes on Twitter. Everybody's like, oh, we don't want these artists talking about these things and blah, blah, blah. But that made me go watch the watch the video. I was like, I'm gonna go watch the whole thing, see what he was talking about on YouTube. And I watch it and I'm like, I don't think people really appreciate how perspectives evolve in these larger things. I think you were talking about the way the internet in general, like they've been on you for like seven years uh, about Uzi, right? About Uzi in these in these different takes and the way they aged. And I wanted to ask you, like, what do you think? Who do you think does do it right, right? Because we we don't think our, our artists have an obligation to get involved politically, and you don't want them talking talking out of turn if they don't understand or pretending to be about something. But who do you think is doing it well? <sighs> hmm. I think uh, um, just celebrities or musicians in general. At mu anybody, anybody. Um. Hmm. You know, I've seen. Obviously, I'm close to it because we just saw the the Book of Hove, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. the whole Brooklyn Library thing, and I know about the Sean Carter Foundation. I also know about the critiques people gave Hove about the NFL, and I understand who Jay-Z's always been as a businessman and a capitalist. Um, I think that, you know, um, Jay-Z has done a great job over a long period of time. Like, we've got to see things play out. Has he made mistakes? Short term, have we seen things that we don't like or particularly like? Have we had to, you know, look, during the NFL thing, which I was very much outspoken about, you know, supporting Colin Kaepernick and not supporting the NFL and all of that. But I understood that, young black men were still going to be going to play football. And so it wasn't as if we weren't still going to be out on that field chasing that bag and who's going to be in those rooms and who. So I understood that side of it too. I don't love it. Right. I don't like it. 
Um, but I understand, and I think Jay Z somebody that I was like, you know what? Let me see where this goes. He's earned the right for us to give him an opportunity to see if he can finesse this into something that we may like later on. We don't love it now, but maybe we'll like it later on, right? Um, so I think he's had a good balance with it. I think Beyonce's had a great balance with it. There's, you know, she continues to do work and do things. Um, you know, I think when you're as rich as they are, I don't think we're ever going to be completely satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're never going to be like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's like, you know, when you're dealing with billionaires, it's like, yo, fix everything tomorrow. Yeah, you know what I mean? Do so more. do more. Like, I don't think we'll ever be completely satisfied with people who are at that financial level. I don't think, yeah. you know, uh, I don't, I don't see that being a thing. Um, you know, and then obviously there's, there's, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, quietly that have done a lot of things. Like 50 Cent does a lot of things that people never hear true. about. Right. I have like two um, books. Right. Um, and, but even like what he does in Queens and parks and taking care of parks and business and, and making sure money flows back. And I think that's another thing that I think we often uh, look over in yeah. this capitalist society is that we live in a construct that is based on finances. Mm -hmm. And and that's the hustle. Like that's the whole grift of this shit. Yeah. They marketed to the world this freedom shit. And when you get here, this shit is about bread and who's getting it and how you getting it. And so yeah, I think it. a lot of times we don't really give credit to the entrepreneurs of hip hop and the way that we've provided jobs and opportunities through this music. Even though, yes, there's toxicity in it, but there's toxicity in society. There's no way hip hop or any entity is going to be able to be better in some ways than the 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 levels of toxicity yeah. in society like we're all, we all come pro pre-programmed and pre-packaged from the world that we kind of grew up in right yeah and, and and has influenced us and we can only try to be better each day uh so it's gonna come with some bullshit but yeah. i think we i think i think giving a thumbs up to uh and, and acknowledging the amount of jobs and opportunities that have been provided uh, by individuals that have made money through hip hop and entrepreneurialism, or, you know, uh, even what Tyler Perry's doing, you know, down in Atlanta and providing jobs and buying that land and all that. I don't really, I don't know if we stop and really appreciate that level of, of, uh, of business and legacy and all of the things that are happening right in front of our eyes right now. Yeah, um, that, I think we that do. puts food in people's refrigerators. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think we do. Honestly, we very much so live in the time of, and I know this as somebody who's online and very active on it, Twitter, it was, we're very much on so the time of, what can I criticize? Where's the hole in this? Where's the gap? Like, we see something good and we're like, hmm, but what must be bad? Where is there a source of critique before we really, you know, uh, recognize the magnitude of the good or where something is creating progress that otherwise wasn't there? And I guess that makes me think of, because hip, the hip-hop culture, the black community in general, anything black, but let alone hip-hop, is given all of the negative attention. What do you think is the most underrated positive aspect of what's ha happens in the community? Um, I think inf sharing of information and sharing of experience. Yeah. Um, I think also, you know, I talk about this a lot because, you know, I, I remember when there was a huge critique on hip hop of sampling, right? And the artists yes. of, you know, the artists that came and, and, and the elders that came before us and created these monumental soundscapes through music uh where piss it was like yo y'all sampling our shit create your own shit right like whatever whatever which is valid which is valid critique uh but what we you know what we sit here today and understand i think is that one of the positives was that we were able to remember and celebrate music from a generation before us and, and keep it alive right and yeah. so I think in many ways, that's one of those moments that built bridges for generations for us to really yeah. enjoy. I, I firmly believe that, you know, black music is our natural resource and it can't be duplicated anywhere else on the planet and us, our stories can't be duplicated. And so um, I think our our ability to monetize and, and, and own is obviously uh, lacking right yeah. because of the the infrastructure and access to resources and banks and you know that whole capitalistic system uh but what what kind of uh emits from our soul and 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 broadcasts from just our spirit to one another and our ability 
to connect with each other and make sure that we don't feel alone and we find joy and all those kind of things. I think that's where um, I find uh, a lot of a lot of happiness. And, you know, I think that's one of the kind of overlooked pieces, like even right now where you have, you know, Burner Boy selling out a stadium in New York City. Right. And you have African artists, you know, working with Caribbean artists and artists who are African and Caribbean in the UK who are working with American artists and this kind of, you know, reconnection of creativity and art and, you know, people traveling to West Africa annually just to just to have a party and have a good time, right? Like, I know people are going to poke holes in that and, you know, you should be showing up and doing the knowledge and learning, but getting there, getting people there is the first step, making it commonplace, making it regular is the first step. The next step becomes really appreciating culture and really connecting and sharing sharing what uh, each other went through, uh, and yeah. and having that familiarity with one another. So, I think that for me is, is one of those um, kind of uh, uh, not not smoking on not spoken on victories that we're experiencing right now. Yeah, no, that is beautiful. And since you brought up sampling, I feel like I have to ask because you know there's always the constant discussion around sampling now every time a new female rapper drops a song the twitter dialogue is oh my god <laughs> another sample track and we've always done sampling but i think there probably is something to the argument that the samples have become maybe less i think before but you have to tell me i'm obviously going to defer to you um i think before it seemed probably like there was more of um let's look for samples and songs that people maybe might not recognize or older things and it seems more like maybe they're more like mainstream hits we more readily identifiable uh, identify mm-hmm. but how do you feel? How do you feel about our sampling? How do you feel about the state of it? Listen, I think first you got to look at, you know, it, it, it's art, right? So people yes. going to like it. People not going to like it. Like, that's just, yeah. that's just art. <laughs> uh, and then there's sub- kind of like subjective of like, is it good or not? Like, yeah, you know, I think this is dope and, you know, whatever. But then there's kind of like, you know, when you get off in the weeds of like production and like, you know, did you do anything interesting with the sample? Like, I think that's kind of what people sometimes are saying. Like, you didn't even do nothing. Like, you just, you know, nothing it's, happened. Like, you just rock. Right. And we and we still love the other song. But yeah. some of that is generational, right? Because remember, yeah. Notorious B.I.G., Juicy, they did, and nothing happened. It was just yeah. a loop of the original. Now. Biggie is so amazing as an artist and a rapper that that was the amazing piece of it, right? Like his abilities, what he brought to it. Um, but at this, when people heard Juicy, I rem- you know, I'm an old head, so I remember old heads being like, that, that ain't nothing but that in too many. Like, this ain't special. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, ain't nothing happening yeah. here. Um, so that critique also has been around for a while. It just wasn't no social media. Right. So a lot of these voices, a lot of these voices and these ideas, these conversations was happening in barbershops, hair salons, you know, at the club, amongst DJs, whatever. But wasn't nobody posting them online. So what you're saying is the old heads are evolving and we have Internet. So yeah, (laughs) now 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 y'all the old heads with Internet. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. (laughs) That's that's hilarious because that is, I'm sure, true. (laughs) That is so funny. Okay. Um, all right. Who do you think? Cause you know, a, a lot of people focus, it's funny people focus on it's everything. The internet, our whole world is a negativity focus. Right. Uh, and they'll focus on what artists they think you don't like or who you've criticized, but they're not talking about all the many artists you do like and have given a platform and talked to you. Who do you like who in this new arena or in the last however many years, who has surprised you, who has impressed you? Uh, impre- so <laughs> I have a layer response, right? Yes. So it, it, first, let me say, it took me a while to get used to the reality that when we meet artists now, they are not developed and ready for prime time. Yeah, that's true. right. So when we meet an artist now, um, it's not like what I'm what I was accustomed to, which was they know their perspective. They know what they want to say. They've been developed. They've been kind of like run through the gauntlet of like what this is what is this offering you are bringing to the market right yeah it was it was it was kind of like built right yeah now we're meeting people before it's built yeah so i had to re kind of calibrate my brain to go okay i need to look at like what's the raw talent here what are people finding particularly interesting or special about this offering 
And what I see today may not be what I see in a couple of years as they figure out their path, right? And we're going to see it all happen. It's going to unfold on the internet. They're going to make mistakes. Like, we're going to see the, all the bullshit, and we're going to have to, like, sift through that to try to, like, stay focused on the fact that this person really does have a unique talent. They just haven't really calibrated Fine, it all it. and gotten it lined up yet. It all. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, it would be hard. You know, I would say this. Um, there's a lot of artists that I really, really, really like that are like brand new, that are super talented. And I hear and see the talent, uh, but they haven't, you know, had a hit yet or it hasn't, you know, because I work for Apple Music, too. So yeah. I'm actually in the weeds every day, kind of like listening to, you know, this one and that one who has like two songs like they not even. Yeah. But like, ooh, that's dope. Or they got a really great voice. Or this is a great idea, but it ain't, you know, mixed right. Or it don't, you know, the production could be better. Like, there's so many elements. You know, I think, I think the audience also needs to understand this. Music is art, but it's also about vibration. And people are attracted to certain vibration and vibes. You know, you hear the word vibes, vibrations, differently. But then there's certain vibrations of songs that are universal. Yeah. There are certain moods that transcend a specific group and can, and can connect. There's other moods yeah. and vibes that are specific to like a certain group or a certain mindset or a certain geography or a certain, you know what I mean? So not everything is for everybody. Um, yeah. And, and so um, it's tough for me to say like, you know, just a couple of names, right? Cause yeah. Like I, I w I'm surprised by Lil TJ, who's from the Bronx, who just really okay. put out a first album. Who I've been watching have success for a few years, and you know he just survived being shot seven times. And this kid been in and out of jail since he's 14, 15 years old from the Bronx. When I met him, he had just got out of jail. He'd been in jail since high school, but he's got a story to tell, and he's got an interesting voice, and he loves the music, and he, you know what I mean? He's really. Yeah. He's and 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 not only that, but he's a he's an adopted foster kid. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. came up and and you know we know these kids from the Bronx. Like we see these yeah. kids, and not everybody gets to survive that shit. You know this foster right. system and adoption system and all that, and jail and, and all that City, shit. Rikers. Oh, he been in all that shit. Yeah. And so and then and so that's this is someone that has a a vulnerable story, and he's trying to he's really trying to find his place in the game, and he's having success. Um. Uzi Vert, for that matter, you know, I, my boy Drama signed Uzi Vert, so I know Uzi Vert's talent from early. And, you yeah. know, when me and him had our little back and forth, it was me challenging, like, prove me wrong. I want you to, yeah. like, I, based on what I'm yeah. seeing right now, I'm not sure you're going to make it. There's no <laughs> evidence to suggest that you're ready for prime time, so let's see what you got. Right. You know, that's tough. In my way, I was brought up, that's tough love. You know what I mean? Yeah. You might not be nothing, bro. Don't mean we don't love you. <laughs> But if you don't have to focus in tenacity, you may not be here, but he's still here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he's created a brand for himself and he proved me wrong. And I love that. And I love, I love how he's mixing metal and, and, and finding his, his own lane. And he's very unique and offering. Yeah. I mean, hell, even that I just want to rock record is so important because it brought basically like just dropping a break beat in a club and people dancing back. Yeah. Yeah, no, right. Like facts. if you think about it in that context, that beat comes on, everybody knows what hype. to do. Hype, hype, right, yeah, you, my friend. You know hype. the assignment when that record comes on, and yes. we hadn't had that in a while. <laughs> yes. Right. That is and amazing. so that's dope too. I love that. Oh, that is amazing. So that makes me. So I have multiple questions. I that that makes me want to offshoot Ebro because you're one of the few people you know they'll talk to. We have a lot of. We have a couple of people, a couple of figures that I would consider hip hop staples, and you're obviously one of them that are usually they have come up in radio and are still there, the Charlotte Mains of the world and stuff. But you are somebody who has your foot in Apple Music too. So, what is that like, right? Because I feel like a lot of other people, I feel like the, you have a diversity, you have a diversified portfolio. So, I think that makes you <laughs> the same giant that you are. How, how does that feel like being in radio? What do you think is the future? What's happening with radio? How do you like your experience at Apple Music? How's that? Um, so, uh, uh, the question is, how do I like where radio's going or, or is it, is it a two think? prong question? Where is it going? Two prong question. Um, you know, radio is, um, radio's not going anywhere because people keep making things and calling it radio, even though it's not even actually radio. 
So, you know what I mean? Like, there's like actual things that are like, oh, this is this radio. And you're like, well, that's not really radio. Radio is like, you tune it in in your car and it's like an FM signal. What you're doing is actually an internet stream. Podcast. So it's not really radio, it's but I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in that regard, people love the idea of radio, right? And yeah. I think that radio has a place because it's easily accessible. And it the other part of, of radio that's been great for generations is it's, in some ways, very diverse, right? Like you go up and down the dial, you hear Spanish, you hear, you know, uh, uh, news, you hear this type of music, you hear that. There's so many different types of things you can run into for free uh, yeah. on the radio. So I think people love free. I think many corporations are learning that people love free. They don't mind commercials. Like they will sit through commercials to not pay another subscription. So I think That's people... Nice. I think people uh, in in big business are 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 seeing that. I think whether or not people invest in radio and growing radio and whatever that is is really determined by the advertising world and whether or not they value the engagement or the the way radio is measured, right? Like how the actual ratings come in and does an advertiser feel like they get a good return on the money they spend at that type of medium? Yeah. So. That's yeah. that aside. Um, then the 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 Apple Music space that I work in, um, you know, I've had the the I guess fortunate opportunity to learn management and dealing with back office and dealing with corporations and speaking their language and helping them understand audience and helping them speak to audiences and this sort of thing. So um, that provided me an opportunity to 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 be in the Apple Music space. So. They also have a free radio station on Apple Music. So I do host a radio show there. I do do interviews there. But a lot of people don't know that behind the scenes, I have a team that I manage and work with and, you know, work with some of the other executives on, uh, you know, hip hop and R&B all over the globe, uh, creating content all over the globe, as well as, you know, other things like, you know, we have a big inclusion and diversity team at Apple. We have something called Racial Equity and Justice Initiative, where we're building like incubators. We have a, a thing we do with HBCUs at the Propel Center. Um, you can look it up at Clark Atlanta, where we bring in students to learn the music business, and it's all funded by Apple. Uh, we have That's a thing amazing. in Detroit. Yeah, we have a thing in Detroit um, that we just got up a couple of years ago, uh, which is a program where... Uh, predominantly black women, but women spe spe almost specifically and, and minority groups uh, yeah. get to learn the business of Apple, right? From a coding and engineering perspective, where you actually yeah. get to understand the work that happens at Apple. Uh, and yeah. then you go through this program and it, and it kind of makes you uh, available to get employment with Apple. Um, yeah. You know, and then we have like you know, other things that we do, like making sure, monitoring and making sure that just at Apple, we're spending with uh, black and brown and women owned businesses when we're doing contracts for different things all the way through design and all of this sort of stuff. So I'm kind of involved in a lot of that stuff behind the scenes. That is that is amazing, Ebro. And that's the stuff that you that you don't hear. Right. And people like don't realize the way that you make spaces larger, the way that you get more people involved and really teach them this business i you know i was having a conversation with my friend because my friend's very excited for me interviewing you we have been deeply, thank you he's like, oh he probably thinks you're gonna ask him political questions and he don't know you deeply in his hip-hop business and i'm like right <laughs> absolutely absolutely right because we were talking i'm like you know i don't think people under underappreciate and underestimate that radio is still around because I, when I had a car in 2016 in law school, so when I, when I had a car, I was listening exclusively to radio. And how I first became, like, Young M.A. was first made known to me because they beat her. They beat that song so bad on the radio. Yeah, that was a joint, like, though. That was a joint, though. That joint was running off out here. Hey, I drove like three hours into Long Island one night when I dragged my friend so that she could go see Young M.A. perform. I was <laughs> obsessed. And I remember the level to which I knew the radio broke that song and that artist for me because I did not know Young M.A. to the point where I think it was one of y'all on the radio referred to her as a she. And I was like, why do I keep calling her she? Why do I keep calling this man a she? And I was like, <laughs> and I look, I was like, oh, let me find out. <laughs> like, let yeah. me find out. Yeah. So what do you, what do you, what's the last song you feel like the radio really made the song? Cause I think that's, I think the radio made ooh for me. You know, it, I, I don't know if radio can single handedly take credit. Look, a lot of people think radio broke records back in the day and in, in, in the Frankie Crocker days, in some <laughs> ways it did. Right. 
Yeah. Because the label would get it from the artist and they would go straight to the radio to play it. In many cases, it didn't because it was play, being played at the Paradise Garage and Frankie Crocker heard it and brought it to the radio. But then people, like, so in your mind, you're saying it got we broke radio. Young M.A. But I know that the internet was kind of buzzing on Young M.A. before we played it on the radio. So it's kind of, yeah. it's relative to, you know, how you kind of run into yeah. to the content. Um, yeah. And then some people would debate, well, radio makes it a household name. Like, it yeah. takes it from this, you know, a small cultural group or a small community yeah. and exposes it to other communities. But that community yeah. that's coming from is going to be like, yeah, I ain't break shit. We've been on this. Yes. No, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's absolutely facts. Right. So, yeah. and, and like, that happens with Caribbean and African music all the time. Because I always tell people, I'll be like, yo, if the community don't say it's popping, it ain't popping. Yeah. Like, you can't just take a Caribbean or African record and jump on the radio like, yo, we got this new to go. They'll be like, nah, we ain't co-signed that yet. That ain't it. That's how people do in Shinsia now, I feel like. I feel like the Caribbean is not on on the the pop change. On on They are doing her very much so like that. Like, Shinsia will come out a song that I'm like, I know exactly yo. where she's going with it. It's Jiggy to the Americans. And when I look on my Caribbean timeline, they are not, They're not right. having yo. it at all. And, I, and Shinsia is fire. Like fire. talent wise, fire. Yes, 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 and they not having these changes. They are not. <laughs> they are not. Happy. And I think it's so funny. I'm like, we will accept. We talk till we blue in the face about how Drake, <laughs> Drake, Drake will take these elements and co opt and he watering it down. But I don't know one of us that wasn't jigging to all of those. But Shinsia do it. Shinsia, it was authentic too, and she give a little pop, a little mainstream spin, and they like. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh come on, y'all, <laughs> y'all ain't being fair. I swear we would like this if it was somebody else. They, they yeah, yeah, right. Hard with that. But I think it's because you know there is a, you know, uh, you have an obligation to your community. That's a yeah. that's a thing. You that's yeah. a thing. And, and you know, I don't think people, um, you know, people sometimes it's, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of like when your parents been telling you to do something, and yeah. you know. And and you go out and you go against your parents and then you got to come back home eventually. And your That's parents nice. is like, yo, we told you, like, you should listen. You should listen. <laughs> I think the same thing happens in our community where you run out here too fast speeding and you ain't and you don't bring the the people who yeah. you don't you don't stick with the people who brought you to the dance in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who do you and, think? And it, yeah. And it's hard for artists. Right. Because artists evolve. Right. Like they go out and see the world. They go out and live life. They, you know, their their bank account changes and they're able to yeah. leave and, and travel and see new things and experience new things. And they want more and new things for themselves. But the community they come from has it doesn't get to change as fast. Exactly. Right. Like there's limitations on that change based on, you know, finances and just based on the fact that shit, I, I'm going to work every day. You was in Spain or, you know, Prague or Japan, wherever you was, I was around, you know, I was around the way getting this money and trying to get my kid to daycare. So yes, I love that you went and changed, but can you entertain me? Yes. You know, in the way I want you to entertain me. And yeah, it, it, it's tough for artists, you know, um, yeah. like she sees an artist and every time she drop, I'm supporting like, cause yeah, I see I'm what saying. it is. Like I saw the work from early. Um, I love, I love that she experiments, but yeah, like, People be giving her a hard way. They be giving her a hard way. They give my girl a hard time. <laughs> they give my girl a hard time. I'm like, y'all, please get off it and see his back. I swear this is a jig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know. They like, man. Now, nah, she, it's gonna something gonna happen. It, it. I think you I know. Think so. Maybe this clip will move around and people will start to have the convo because I think sometimes yes. that's what it is. People feel yeah. like, yo, did you forget? See, because I think what's what's often missed is yeah. many of our communities yeah have been uh scorned yeah right by people uh leaving mm -hmm. uh not coming yeah. home not paying homage right like yeah. and so there is a lack of trust yes that yes. you're just gonna run off and 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 you're gonna take all the sauce that comes from our community but not and bring us along back. for the ride yeah yeah, that's absolutely true. I think sometimes too, we, I, something I see also happen a lot. The other side of that is sometimes I feel like we don't support artists in what was their original, you know, 
of the authentic or the kind of music it is that we insist we want from them. We've never supported them in, in a mainstream successful way. And then when they pivot to something else, we act as though they the ones, you know, abandoned in the blueprint. I feel like I said that a lot with Chloe is a good example of that. Like I've been listening to Chloe and Hallie for years. I listened, the, the kids all right is an amazing album. No, skits, amazing, no amazing album. Amazing. And that never even got the kind of commercial success. And the second album on godly hour did better than the first one, but still, even though they were, them girls were working also, let's talk about it in the pandemic. They were working the most original change in their performances, doing everything. They could do every, not checking for them on any level. There was not checking for them. The minute Chloe decides she's a bad bitch and want to post <laughs> and want to do her pop music. Why won't you give me a ballad? You wasn't listening to them ballads. And I feel like that is a thing we also see, right? Artists can, you never, you we don't give them the credit and we also don't want them to switch up. Please do that thing I was not commercially supporting you doing. <laughs> well, and, and I think too in there is sometimes the math ain't mathing. Yeah, that's true. Right? So that's true. they could have been supporting, yeah. but it wasn't enough people. The, it wasn't yeah. enough bodies. And so then the yeah. artists pivot and go, yo, I need to bring more people into the store. Yeah. Right? And yeah, so the people that have been in the store, he was like, yo, there's five of us in here. And they like, yo, but I need 50 in here. Yeah. And so, you know what I'm saying? Like, they go try to get their numbers up by making a different sound, a different vibration, so that yeah. they could bring other people into the party. And the people that's been at the party is like, uh-uh. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't even want these people at my party. And it's my part. <laughs> that, is very, that is very much so true. <laughs> you know what I <laughs> mean? And so I think it, it's, it, it's tough. It's a tough job. It's a tough game. Uh, but I think, you know, in the, specifically for Shinsia, Chloe and Holly, I think, um, Chloe and Holly, excuse me. I think, um, they have time, like they, yeah. something going to click cause yeah. they're putting in the work. There's familiarity. I think sometimes too, um, social media is kind of like the, a gift and a curse. Boy. Right. Because, you know, you, you want to connect with your people every single day in the ways that you can. Yeah. But in that connection, they have, they sometimes feel like they already have you. So then you yeah. release some new art and they're like, maybe not passionate enough to run out and get the new art because they feel like, but we've been talking, I've been seeing you, I've been supporting you. They think clicking on the Instagram is supporting. Hey, hey, people, and they really do not understand. I feel like there's so much commentary from people who don't run platforms. They, they actually do not get the difference between... It'll be like they'll blow down on artists because the artist views on YouTube isn't what their Twitter stuff is or their so their Instagram. And they're like, these platforms are siloed. What happens on what the numbers you think are on Instagram and all these things? An entirely different ball game. But people will look at that and hold artists like, oh, you did that, but it, they did that there, but not here. And oh, it's a it, it's a flop. And I also think, in the same way you said, you had to kind of come to terms with the fact that artists are not where they used to be. They did not come out fully developed uh, in the times, right? And artists can kind of blow overnight. And I think overnight success is is something everybody seems to want. And I don't think it's good in most, in most, I, people will want that. They'd be like, oh, you want a viral video? No, I don't. I don't want my YouTube a video to go incredibly viral before I have any other content to keep those people there and go there. But they, Very smart. they, they don't think about things like, uh, like that. And something I realized I feel like artists get played is in the same way that we, we, we can quickly make an artist. We also don't give artists any time for anything. Like an example I saw on Twitter was the other day was Dochi song. What it is. Someone was like, this was supposed to be a hit. Like, I can't believe, you know, this didn't blow up and this didn't flop. And, or it just came out like a, four weeks ago. Someone's <laughs> like, it, it has time, babes. You can make it a hit still. <laughs> like, yeah. It just happened. If something doesn't have overnight, if people aren't saying that something is greatness, immediately everyone's like, forget it. And that kind of mentality doesn't get the wire acknowledged as the greatest show. You know what I mean? They, right, it's just right. what is the immediate pickup. And I think that also makes a lot of artists disheartened. Because something I think also, because you see it a lot, you see a lot more artists or just public figures feelings, because I certainly be cursing people out on the internet. <laughs> um, you, you see artists take that to heart more too, right? Being told, having the internet jump on them like they flop. You'll see the Ari Lennoxes be like, I'm not coming on this social media with y'all no more. <laughs> You're not getting this live. You're not getting this. JT was cussing people out yesterday. <laughs> I wonder how you think that impacts what they do with their careers, that kind of quick reception. Oh, um, you know, I, I really don't know. I think, you know, it, I don't know if there's a, a right answer um, because yeah. they're being vulnerable and yeah. they're having, they're having, they're sharing good and bad moments. And I think relationships of any kind are about good and bad moments. Like if we're being honest, right? Yes, like, that's right. because 
you know, people love a come up, but they love a tear down, and then they love a comeback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know if there's a right answer there. Like, you know, I think I think being vulnerable has its has its upside. Yeah. Uh, I think being too erratic all the time has a downside where people are like, right. yo, I can't with you. Like every day it's something different. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know if there's a right answer to that question. Yeah. No, you're, you're or should you're I say, I don't know if there's one answer to that question. You know what? Boom. You're and and you're right. Let me see. I have, a, I have so many things that I want to ask you about you, bro. I'm like, well, I got you here. <laughs> um, <laughs> good. Right. Yes. Um, I guess so. All right, let's talk about drill music. I feel like some, somebody pointed this out to me and I was like, how was I not going to ask him about that? Because there's obviously drill is constantly a, a thing being focused on in a, in a very negative, in a very negative way, especially, you know, in relation to our mayor, you know, laws, bill, all these different types of things is why I think about it more. What is What are your thoughts on the rising like the drill music scene? Um, I think that people... I think my first thought is, why y'all telling on yourself? That's my first thought. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, but then my second thought is, you know, uh, violence in music isn't a new phenomenon. I think mm-hmm. real t- I think real time violence in, a, in music is a phenomenon, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. wait, you're talking about something that happened last night and it's on the internet today, right? You know that's what I mean? Good. Like, that's crazy. Um, but that <laughs> has more to do with technology than it has to do with violence in music, right? From right. all types of violence, whether it's violence against uh, each other in our neighborhoods or violence against women or, you know, any type of violence, right? Um, yeah. So I think uh, I think that's not a new phenomenon. Um, yeah. I, I, I uh, you know, look, I came up in hip hop, man. People have been talking crazy in these records for a long time. And, and there's yeah. been re and there's things that didn't transcend mainstream that were just around the way neighborhood violent shit. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't remember the Crips and Bloods albums from LA that used to get sold at Swap Me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you had to be in LA for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there's always been this undercurrent, and most of the music that we're talking about in New York City doesn't transcend into the mainstream, like when you're talking about these drill records, right? Like they're just big, maybe they're big on YouTube, they're big on Instagram, or maybe they're played in, you know, late night rotation on the radio station when they're playing like the underground sounds of a city, but they're not playing at 10 o'clock in the afternoon. But there have been some records, you know, like when Shmurda and them was talking crazy on on that record, like that, which wasn't technically a drill record based on what we understand the, the dynamics and the sonics of drill to be today. But it uh, like I don't, the emergence of that scene. Right? Like, that definitely was a thing, right? And that record was yeah. a hit. Uh, and it transcended. So, uh, you know, I think, once again, I if we, were, if we zoom out and take a macro view, we have individuals in our society that live in some of the most treacherous, toxic uh, death traps that you can imagine yeah. in our country. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're not creative. And that doesn't mean they don't have something to say. And so they're giving you what them and their friends want to hear and say. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and they also understand that we live in a society that monetizes violence. Sure does. Sure does. That is an excellent point, Ebro. So they're not stupid. They're like, oh, I can get money talking about my real life shit that I'm living. Right. That most right. of y'all motherfuckers is scared to come fix or won't come fix or right. won't ain't even interested in talking to me about it. So I I, I have mixed feelings. Like there's definitely yeah. been times, you know, I work in the morning, so I work six yeah. six a.m. in the morning. There's somewhere I'm like, yo, y'all, we not playing that, bro. It's eight o'clock in the morning. We not playing that. <laughs> We're not playing that. <laughs> like, it's not happening. I'm not playing. You're that. Like that is not the vibes. I'm starting my. It's day. eight o'clock in the morning. We not doing that. I I took the bar listening to the most. <laughs> I took the bar my bar exam listening to the most violent high trap drill music. If you hear what I listen to, and then when I show up in court, you know based on the attitude <laughs> I'm giving the prosecutor. If I right. listen, if I listen to rap, I'm on go. I get to court ready to fight. <laughs> 
Well, and you know, a lot of people use it for working out or whatever their challenges are that they're faced with today, right? Because that's the same energy that these people are making this music in. Like, I, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to live. I want to get the fuck out of here. And what is the fastest route to me getting a bag to get the fuck out of this shit that I'm in? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, um, and I've also, I've had these debates for a long time. People will be like, you know, do you feel a responsibility? Should you be supporting it? And I'm like, it's tough. So I'm, I'm yeah. not going to support a kid who's trying to get out of a Thank situation you. and help him yeah. see the world, help him or her see the world. And then they're yeah. and inspire, you know, other young people that maybe they yeah. can come home and tell them, Hey, yo, there's a world out here that you ain't even got to, like all of this yeah. shit we doing, we ain't even gotta do that. There's a whole world out here that loves us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wants to see us when we when we try. They love black people. The world, many parts of the world, just want to see us because we right. are on planet Earth. We are some of the most hi highly beloved, remarkable human beings with a unique experience that nobody has ever been through. And yeah. when they see us survive it, they want us meet us. They're like, yo, you survived that shit. Like, yeah. bravo. They may not like how and we you, went about it. They may not like all of those things. But, you know, I think I, I get torn. It's I'm torn. Yeah. That's the answer. That's the answer. I mean, you know, me too. Because I think there's a, I think one, I think there's a way to do things. I think you could think that something ultimately is destructive while recognizing the, the lived reality of somebody and the validity and certain like feelings or how they came to certain positions or why their even response to things is a particular thing. Because at the end of the day, we're the product of our environments. And I think too, you see the other side of it is, We'll say we don't, you know, the people that criticize that kind of music or be like, oh, we want these artists to change. We want them to make it. But then when they do, we do see a sign of them kind of being like, I've survived and I'm kind of chilling. I'm not on that the way. We're not happy because every time Bobby Schmurter do a little jig, put out a little wholesome Bob, they like, hey, we we waited on you, both. <laughs> they are mad. <laughs> they are mad. Every time I'm like, well, and how about this? Bobby's in a, and Bobby's in a place where he don't give a fuck. He don't have nothing to prove. Exactly. He like, look, I don't want to be that person. You're I'm right. going to go out here and meet these girls. Yeah, y'all going to see me with some white girls. I ain't ass. never been with white girls before. I'm about to go see what this is all about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm about yeah. to go out here and I'm about to put some different clothes on and laugh and smile and dance and do what I do. And ain't right. none of y'all going to tell me nothing because you know what you know what this really could be and who I really yeah. was. Yes. And, they, and we should look at that. We should look at that as success. Like I watched a video on YouTube the other day. It was like, oh, Bobby Schmurda, the biggest flop in some white guy. And I'm like, babes, is that a, is that not him truly being successful and making it? I was yeah. like, is that not it? Because I'm not looking at my child. I don't want my child to work as much as I was working. If my child could be an American <laughs> citizen and be chilling, I love that for you. Congratulations. <laughs> it, look, it looks like you've won. Right. And, and, you my, have and that... my man is grinning. Yeah, you have that perspective. Yeah. Like that's perspective right there. And I, yeah, yeah, I just think we lose sight of that. Like, um, and, and also the internet's not real. Let's be honest, y'all. Like at some point, y'all not, not real. Y'all not really mad. Y'all not really, uh, you, you, They're you're not. mad. You're mad in the, in the safety of your own little enclave, wherever you are, you at your yes. desk at work mad just cause you ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> you don't want to do the work that's in front of you, but you're not really mad. You're not right. really mad and you don't really Nobody care. Nobody having those fights in real life. No, exactly. Exactly. You know, and you know, I know too, I have to check my own self, right? Because Twitter, I, Twitter it's funny. Twitter runs so much discourse, but it's a very t small percentage of us on Twitter that are actually, you know, putting up most of the takes. And I think to myself sometimes like the amount of times I want to jump down somebody's throat on Twitter for something that if they said to me in the hair salon, like if I was at, the, at my hair salon in Harlem and we talking, cat, 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 key, key, key jokes, you know, I'm hearing this different thing or blah, blah, blah. And it's not a problem. Like someone will tell me a take in real life that like, I don't agree with, but we have a whole discourse. I don't think you're a demon, but I hear it on Twitter and I'm like, what, what, what you say? <laughs> and I have to check my own self like, ma'am. Please close this app. Look what it's doing to you. <laughs> it's frying your brain, Miss Mamas. <laughs> um, something I wanted to ask you, Ebro, is how, because I'm going to ask you a couple more questions before I let you be free, because I know you are a busy man and I so appreciate you, um, is basically one, like, how has the landscape changed, right? Because I, you have, again, you have a, you have a look at this, this whole arena of like what's expect or and how do you or more so i guess the question i should ask is how do you think your role your role in hip-hop and the work that you do has changed over over the years like from beginning to now um you know i i feel like my role 
I, I don't even know what my role was in the beginning, right? Like, I just was happy to be here, right? Like, I was just kind of yeah. like, ooh, I, you know, I got, a, I got a show on the radio, and I get to play music, and they, you know, I'm meeting artists, and, you know, I get to identify records, but then I also got to do the bullshit that I don't want to do, which is, you know, bring, play songs that I don't like, and that's just part of the gig, you know what I mean? It's what it is. Yeah. Um, and then I think now um, I just try to be someone who can, you know, impart some information on a young artist and let them know from where I sit and what I've seen, how the game's going to play out or ways for them to manage longevity or, you know, um, helping other media folks if I can understand where the opportunities are and, you know, mentor folks when I can and, you know, help them understand where, where business is going. Right. Like, um, yeah. I think, you know, one of the things I always talk to people about is following the money. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I know you, I know you got things you want to do and you got your dreams, but at a certain point, <laughs> you, clock, you know, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to pay these bills and, and, and what life do you actually want for yourself? Yeah. Um, so I, I, some of that just being, just being an old head, you know what I mean? And trying to be positive <laughs> and then also being somebody who's not afraid to give, give tough love or a tough, you know, take on something that I see some bullshit. Even, you know, for me, even if people um, disagree with me, that's fine. I just want to make that as, make sure it's on the record. That's it. Like, y'all ain't yeah. got to agree. It might be unfun what I'm saying. I might be ruining the moment. Just want to make sure it's on the record. That's it. Go ahead and do what you got to do. I gave you the take. <laughs> it's on the record. So when they yeah. look back at this moment in history, somebody said something about the bullshit. <laughs> yes. I, and I, yo, and that's, that brings, I'm glad you brought it full circle to what you said at the beginning. Like, you are a person that says something that I think is very aware of what the times are and how they change and tries to adapt to that. And, you know, I want some advice for you while, um, Harry, bro, because you're right, you are media, which is why you are, because I'm media, Jason, I'm my, my hand in many different, you know, pots. What is your advice? And also, do you think, because, you know, like, if there are all these figures coming up. Who do you think, uh, as far as any other in the hip hop and media, who do you think is doing a good job? Any new emerg emerging figures you like? Anybody you think that'll be around? And what advice would you give, Ebro? I think there's a, first, there's a lot. And there's a lot of people yeah. doing a great job. Um, yeah. I, the advice I would give is kind of what I said earlier in the convo, which is don't 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 make your brand or whatever content you're creating reliant on other people's content. Hey, Meaning, a word. if you are creating content and the content you make is reliant on an interview, yeah, you don't have anything else to offer other than asking someone else to come and sit with you. You probably want to take a deep look at that because everybody, there's going to be ebbs and flows in that. Yeah. Right? Then the other part is, um, you know, uh, I think you got to scan the landscape and ask yourself, what what can I bring to the table that's unique? Yeah. Right? Um, which isn't the, which is the road less traveled. You know what I'm saying? So it's tough, right? Because it's easy to go ahead and chase down where the money is for the sake of short-term bag, but are you really building longevity that way? If you're yeah. doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Because then yeah. when the, when the world shifts, what do you do? What are you going to have? Right. What's your pivot going to be? Uh, and on yeah. that, I think, I think you do have to kind of plan your pivots, right? Yeah. You got to say, Hey, what are my strengths? Um, you know, what am I doing today? Like even me, I still think I have, ideas that I haven't even got to yet. And I'm on the radio every day. You know what I'm saying? And there's things that I just have stockpiled from either things I've done in the past that I'm going to remix to the future, you know, angles that I could take on, you know, ways to engage the audience and get them involved. Right. Um, yeah. And so I think you got to just kind of map that stuff out for yourself. Uh, and then I think you also got to know how to build community. Absolutely. Thank right? you, Ebro. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. I love your work. Um, you know, and 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 I mean, the re I don't do a lot of these, and the reason I'm here is because I think you're one of the people that's really got something unique and awesome to offer, right? Not only cultural takes, you. but you've been in the courtroom, you've been in these jails, you have passion for it, you understand politics. So, I think you're you're uh very um very well well rounded in in what you have to offer in a conversation. 
And I think that's Thank you so much, you bro. Right. I think that's super unique, right? Like from 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 election coverage to local politics and police to music to you know what I'm saying to you know I think I seen you talking about uh uh what I seen you talking about you was talking about relationships or something one time. <laughs> Hell you can even do pet you could do a pet show. You know what I'm saying? You What's the cat's name? Raheem. Raheem. Yeah. Yo, you and Raheem would be out here, bro. Y'all have your own pet show. That's like, I just gave, that's like five him. different shows. Hey, listen. And Ebro, the minute the U.S. government give me my green card, I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm off to the races, okay? Ebro, trust me, I got it in the tank. <laughs> trust me. They're going to have all that cat. That cat is going to earn his keep. Every day I tell him, there will be plushies of you. <laughs> the minute, the minute that green card come, <laughs> I'm earning. You gonna earn your keep in there, little cat. <laughs> yeah. And, and yo, and shout to the Bahamas too, and Nigeria too, man. Uh, Ola representing you good. I just came back from the Bahamas. Oh yeah. I go to Bahamas oh, every year, sometimes twice a year. We love to see it. Bahamian supremacy for the win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Over at, we be over at the fish fry on Friday night. When you go next, when you go next, let me know so I can make sure. Listen, they they love me home. I can make sure they roll out the red carpet. <laughs> now, that, yo, listen, the Bahamian people show love, man. It's that's a, it, it's great. We I've love been going there for a long you. time. You, I'm ter- tell, really telling you, people sometimes really under, underappreciate the magnitude of an icon. But when I say somebody is that in the black community, the hip hop community, I'm telling you that as someone who was born and raised on an island that is 21 by 7 miles. And I'm telling you, my Bahamian ex boyfriend was on the phone me last night, like, List of things. Ask Ebro this. We need to know about this. I think about this. Oh, I have to ask him while I have, I have to ask for him while I have you here. He said, who's the queen in New York City? Because we were having this debate. Do you have a thought? <laughs> what, do, what do they mean? A, a, a rap, the rap queen. Who's the rap queen? Nah, we ain't doing that today. Yeah, we don't want the barbs see? and the Barty Thank gang you. on here doing hey, all this. Hey, We're not doing this I with the barbs. <laughs> We're not doing this with I the barbs and the Barty <laughs> gang today, brother. <laughs> That's what I told him. I, mean, I was like, I mean, look, we want to people to tune into this video, but like, we want the right energy. Exactly. Because the barbs know. will pull up trying to pull out people's addresses, all type of wild As shit. Somebody, and I don't want Ola to be having to fight no barbs out here because Ola will drag y'all bitches in the street. I don't want no hey, smoke. Ebro, I swear. <laughs> I'm like, and they worse that I was literally telling them, I was like, I get, ha- I get harassed by white supremacist trolls every day and I ain't got shit on upsetting the bars. <laughs> I don't. I don't need no problems. <laughs> Let them have nah, it. No. <laughs> like, New Nicki Minaj yeah. album on the way in October. You know what I'm saying? Shout out <laughs> to the Barty gang. New Cardi album on the way. It's all love, man. It's all love. <laughs> the king, Yo, the kingdom is big enough for two queens, man. Agreed, agreed, absolutely agreed. Thank you so much, Ebro. Yeah, you can call me Ola. You can call me Ola. Yeah, my dad. I see people call you that on. I see people call you that on the internet. So I was like, yeah, Yeah, they be saying, they be saying Ola and my daddy. My it breaks my daddy's whole Nigerian heart. (laughs) Cause they say Ola. Yes, my daddy be like, and my daddy be like, you do not even know because you are Bahamian like your mother, but that means beef in Nigeria. (laughs) 